All right, so today we're in section 3.5, solving inequalities using multiplication or division. So we're still uh, solving these the same way that we solve equations using inverse operations. Just today, we're using multiplication and division. So just as a review, when we see the operation that's connected to our variable, for example, here, m over 3, what operation is that showing? Division. division. So since it's division, I would need to multiply both sides by the reciprocal, which is 3 over 1. Okay, so when I do that, it cancels everything out because my goal is still to isolate the variable on one side of the inequality. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do the exact same thing to the other side. So m is greater than, oh, I made a mistake there. What did I do wrong? M is greater than what? It's greater than 9. It's greater than 9. No, it's no equal sign. It's greater than 9. It's not 3. Um, M is greater than 9. And then I take that answer and I need to graph it. So 9 is my solution. It goes in the middle. And then 8 and 7 and 10 and 11. All right, and would it be an open dot or a closed dot on the 9? Okay, it's going to be an open dot on the 9. And does my arrow go to the right or left? Right. It goes to the right. Okay, so uh, I need to do the same thing on the second inequality. All right, go ahead and try to come up with your answer and graph your solution. All right, so what did you do to both sides? What did you Multiply do to both sides? Multiply both sides by 10. What's negative 7 times 10? Negative 70. Negative 70. Who got C is less than or equal to negative 70? Who got that? Do I get that right? Okay, so now I plot negative 70. What two numbers go to the left of negative 70? Negative 71 and negative 72. Yes, negative 71 and negative 72. Then negative 69 and negative 68. All right, open dot or closed dot? Closed. Closed, and arrow going left or right? Right. Whoa. Left. To the left, less than left, okay? So um, nothing really new here, okay? We're just uh, simply just doing our inverse operations. All right, and the next example, um, really, we're, it's still example one, actually. Um, we just have to add in one detail, negative being attached to the variable. So here we have x over negative 5. Well, we know that our variable can't be negative. Would you agree? Okay, so here's what happens. When a negative is attached to our variable and we have to multiply both sides by a negative number, our inequality has to be reversed. So we still multiply the same way. Our negative fives cancel. 10 times negative 5 is negative 50. But now instead of it being less than or equal to, it's going to be greater than or equal to negative 50. All right, and that's going to be our answer. So here's our only exception to the rule, basically a difference between equations and inequalities. When I have to multiply or divide by a negative, when it's attached to the variable, I have to reverse my inequality. So have I said anything about addition and subtraction when it's a negative? No. So addition and subtraction, you never mess with your inequality sign, okay? The only time it's reversed is when you're multiplying and dividing and the negative is attached to the variable, all right? So negative 50, we come over here and we graph it negative 51 and 2, negative 49, negative 48, closed dot on the negative 50, and arrow going right. Okay, so now I want you to try the second one. All right, negative 12 is greater than x over negative 4. So we multiply both sides by what? By what? What do we multiply both sides by? Negative four. negative 4. That's what's attached to my x. And because a negative is attached to my variable, uh, 
it's going to be positive 48, but now my inequality sign is going to be reversed. X is now greater than 48. Did you reverse it? Did you reverse it? Okay. So now when we graph it, it'll be an open dot on the 48, and X is greater than. Did you read it greater than? Did you draw your arrow right? Okay, so that's a common mistake. So we might look at this symbol right here and think, well, that's a less than sign. But remember, we must read the variable first in our solution. This means that all numbers must be greater than 48 in order to make the inequality true. Does that make sense? Okay, so uh, just might take some getting used to. But remember, if a negative is connected to your variable, and you have to multiply or divide, you must reverse your inequality. Now, in example two, um, we're now just going to solve an inequality using a different operation. Now there's multiplication that's connected to my variable, so I still stick with my inverse operations. Um, go ahead and solve the first one. Go ahead and solve for t. Okay, so we want to divide both sides by negative 10, Okay, so now t, wait, why did I reverse my inequality? Because I, the negative was attached to my variable, I had to divide, t is less than or equal to uh, negative 4. Negative 4. All right, so now when I graph it, negative 5 and 6, did you get the orders of the numbers right on your number line? Did you get that right? Open or close dot? Close. Closed. Arrow going right or left? To the left, oh, whoop, whoop, whoop. to the left, because we had to reverse our inequality. All right, go ahead and just to get to your answer on the second one. I don't want you to graph it yet. I need to make sure that you got your answer correct first. Okay, but go ahead and just solve the inequality. So, what did you do to both sides? You divided by twelve, both sides, right? Okay. So here's my question: Did you? Was there a negative connected to your variable? No. no. So it doesn't matter that this number was negative. Okay, so just because you divide by a negative somewhere doesn't mean you reverse the inequality. The negative must be attached to your variable. So you leave the inequality symbol the same, negative 3. Do you see the difference? The negative has to be attached to the variable in order to reverse the inequality. All right, and remember, does this have anything to do with addition and subtraction? No. no, only multiplication and division. So now that x is less than negative 3, it would be an open dot on the negative 3 and an arrow going left. All right, questions, guys? Any questions? All right, go ahead and turn in your books. I believe it's going to be page 144 page 144. We're going to do an example uh, that deals with writing um, inequalities, writing our own. Example 3. All right, so it says some flocks of Canadian geese can fly nonstop for up to 16 hours. That's a long time. I don't know uh, before I read any more, I don't know for sure if this is true. <laughs> and you know, some of our word problems are a little unrealistic, right? Okay, so this does seem a little excessive, but maybe it's true. It says, in this time, in a 16-hour time frame, the flat can actually migrate as far as 848 miles. That's a long way. At what average speed can the flock fly during the migration? So if they make that maximum of 848 miles, how fast does that mean that they were going? All right, so when we set up an inequality, we start with our total, okay? Whereas with the equation, we always write the equal sign first. Well, with an inequality, there's, there's several different types of inequalities we can write. We're not really sure yet. We need to build everything else out around it. All right, so our total is 848 miles. And how far, how, how long did it say that they could travel without stopping? 16 hours. But I don't know the speed. So 16 hours times some speed, all right, would be the combination there. We're not adding the speed to it, no. If it's 16 miles an hour, or I'm sorry, if it's, say, 10 miles an hour for 16 hours, I would multiply them together to figure out the distance. So what is it saying? It's saying 
it can fly as far as 848 miles. As far as, there's my keyword. Well, if it can go as far as, would it be up to 848 miles? So, not, okay, so it can be 848, so I know it's gonna have an equal to sign, but is it less than or greater than? Is it saying they can fly more than? It's less than. Because here's what it's saying. It can fly as far as, but it can't go over 848, right? That's like the maximum amount of miles it can fly without taking a break. Do you see that? So that's not greater than, it, it's saying, you know, maybe they don't go 848, but they're certainly not going to go over. That's the most they can fly. So it will either be less than or equal to 848. All right, now we divide both sides by 16. And S is less than or equal to 53 miles per hour. Again, not really sure if that's realistic. That seems kind of fast for a goose. I mean, I've seen geese fly. You know, I've never seen one of them fly 53 miles an hour. Um, but even still, even still. But, you know, maybe, maybe. We'll just, we'll just assume, yeah, maybe. All right, so on your homework tonight, it's going to give you scenarios like this. Um, and I, I'm just going to, let's see. Um, let me give you some of these keywords here that should help you. Um, if I told you you needed to score at least and we're focusing on this word at least, a, an 80, okay, at least an 80, at least, would that mean that 80 is the lowest score you can get or the highest score? Oh. I said, you need to get at least an 80, if you get an 85, did you... Did you meet the expectation? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So at least, so your score, S for score, needs to be greater than or equal to an 80. So at least <coughs> means greater than or equal to. Right? You see that? Um, here's another one. If I said, um, let, let's say you're interviewing for a job, and your boss says, you're going to work no more than 30 hours per week. Per week. Um, well, no more than, would that mean that you could work 35 hours? No. No. So if it's no more than 30 hours a week... So we'll do H for hours. We'll be less than or equal to 30. Maybe you will work 30, but you're not going to work more than 30. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, another one that you could see is at most. All right. So again, let's do a job scenario. Your new employer says you will work at most 40 hours per week. Per week. Well, if he says at most, um, could you work um, more than 40 hours a week if it was at most? Yeah. No. Okay. So when they say at most 40 hours a week, that means that's the absolute most that you're going to work. That's still less than or equal to 40. Um, less than and greater than, okay, that's like a gimme, right? Um, that's just some of the common ones. So no more than, at most, um, those are the inequalities that would match those key phrases. And that should help you on your homework tonight on 30, 32, and 34, um, where you're translating the verbal sentence as an inequality. You will see these types of problems on your quizzes coming up. Um, both on Tuesday and next Monday, all right, these inequality uh, sentences. And if you understand that, that's everything you need to know for Section 3.5.